Hello. Welcome to part nine of our story, Demon Dentist by David Williams. Um, tonight, we're going to be reading chapter 17 and chapter 18. <gasps> oh my goodness. Can you remember last night in part eight, he um he was being chased, wasn't he, Alfie? And he got stuck in or got caught up in the um in the dentist surgery. They managed to herd him, didn't they, to the dentist surgery. And Miss Root's finger kept beckoning him like that. And then he saw her silhouette standing in that room saying, Oh my goodness, I wonder what will happen tonight. Without even Al I'll start again. Without Alfie even touching the handle, a door shut slowly and firmly behind him. There was the sound of a key being turned. Somehow he was locked in. How splendid! 2 p.m. precisely. You are right on time for your appointment. Come on in. Miss Root's voice had a hypnotic quality to it. As much as Alfie knew in his mind that he should run away, his legs propelled him forward. He was moving slowly and surely towards her. Come to mummy, she whispered. As he drew closer, he could see the source of bright light was a vast ang angle poise lamp. Now Alfie was standing in her shadow, he could make out Miss Root much more clearly. Looking up at her, the first thing he noticed were her huge, gleaming white teeth, as big as the ivory keys on a grand piano. Next, he noticed her eyes. Those eyes, those black eyes, those eyes so black that it seemed if you gazed into them too deeply, you would see your own death. Then, Alfie could feel his body gliding over to the dentist's chair. It looked ancient, like an antique. Don't worry, young Alfie. Mummy promises to be gentle with you. As Alfie found himself sitting on a chair, it tilted back into position. He glanced down to one side. There was a trolley again, this time crowded with a staggering array of dental tools. Many were rusted with old blackened wooden handles. Some had flecks of blood encrusted on them. They looked more like things you would find in a museum of medieval torture than a modern dental surgery. There were ones with short spikes and ones with long spikes. There were chisels, hammers, pliers. One looked like a giant corkscrew, even a baby hacksaw. Stretched out at the end of the line, taking pride of place, was a huge and malevolent drill. <laughs> Not one of these tools looked designed to relieve pain. They all looked like they would cause it. In heart-stoppingly, eye-wateringly, bum-clenchingly measure. Alfie's eyes darted around the room. The surgery was quite bare. A dental certificate took pride of place on the wall, but the paper and the writing looked like they could be hundreds of years old. Pristine medicine cabinets lined the surgery, most holding tubes of Miss Root's highly toxic toothpaste. In the corner of the room was a long, shiny, grey metal cylinder, no doubt containing nitrous oxide or laughing gas, often used by dentists on their patients to take away the pain. Curiously, on the dial was what looked like a speedometer. It read, slow, medium, fast, very fast, really too fast. Oh my word, make this thing stop now. The surgery windows were all painted black, so nobody could see in and nobody could see out. <coughs> Alfie was startled. Then he looked down to see whether a silky white cat had sneaked into the surgery. It hissed in the boy's direction, its back arched and tail up, pink padded feet pitter-pattering into the room. Oh, don't mind Fang. She's, she's just being friendly. Now, Relax, child. Let mummy take good care of you, incanted the dentist. Miss Root pulled a lever somewhere behind the headrest of the reclining chair. In an instant, metal cuffs appeared, holding Alfie's hands and feet in place. Don't worry, child. These are just for your own safety. So, so you don't lash out. More. <laughs> Smiling, Miss Root dressed her hands in latex gloves. She took her time, enjoying the ritual of smoothing the glove over each long, thin finger. Next, she picked up some notes from a blood-stained cardboard folder. Now, Alfie, I see your last visit to the dentist was six long years ago. 
Miss Reek put the folder back down and pulled the lamp close to the boy's face. It was so hot it smelled like fire. Open wide, there's a good boy, she said. The dentist's ears went... The dentist's eyes were now staring deep into Alfie's. As much as he wanted to cry out, he couldn't. Resistance was futile. Those black eyes of hers were spellbinding. It was as if they had him in a trance. With his mouth dry with fear, the dentist's latex glove squeaked as she traced her index fingers over the tops of his teeth. Now Alfie could feel Miss Root's cold breath on his face as she leaned closer to peer into his mouth. Tartar, decay, plaque, gum disease, heavenly, absolutely heavenly. Alfie heard the ancient instruments clink and clack together as one was selected. Now mum is just going to check for any cavities, she continued. Miss Root picked out a particularly evil looking instrument. It was more like a spear than a dentist's implement with a series of sharp prongs, each one wider than the next. It looked like it was designed to create intense pain as it entered the tooth and even more coming out. Look at that. Don't worry, Alfie, you won't feel a thing, sing on Miss Root. She guided the tool inside his trembling mouth before plunging it into a tooth. Mmm, lots of lovely decay in this tooth. What a find you are. Slowly, the dentist pulled the instrument out of the boy's tooth, twisting it sharply as she did so. Inside his head, he screamed with pain, but no sound came out of his mouth. Clink, clack, the tool was put back on the trolley. Clink, clack, a new one was selected. Now it was the turn of the pliers to assist in the torture, their metal jaws impossibly sharp and jagged. Now hold still, Alfie, whispered Miss Root as she steered the pliers slowly into his mouth. The jaws locked onto his tooth. Mummy won't hurt you. She tugged the instrument sharply. Alfie could feel something coming away inside his mouth. Then, through a thick film of tears, he saw the dentist brandish a bloody tooth in front of his eyes. <gasps> Look at it, she urged. To you, just a tooth. To me, it's like a diamond. Its very imperfections make it perfect. It's beautiful. Then she called out to a white cat. Fang! Fang, where are you? The animal leapt up from the floor and landed on Alfie's stomach, her sharp claws digging into him. The cat began to lick the tooth clean of the blood that was now dripping down her mistress's waist. Now, relax, Alfie, said Miss Root in her jolly tone. Mummy's only just getting started. <gasps> this sounds terrifying, oh my goodness! Alfie must have passed out. His eyes were closed. Maybe he was dreaming. He opened his eyes. <gasps> At first, all he could see were patterns, colours and shapes. After a few moments, Alfie realised he was staring at the ceiling. These colours and shapes were in fact sprays of blood. Some looked very fresh, still wet and glistening. Some looked brown and flaky like they'd dried through it their years before. This was no dream. Alfie realised he was still laying in a dentist's antique chair. He must have been lying there for quite a while and his back was hot and clammy with sweat. Behind him, somewhere out of view, he could hear that sing-song voice again. This time it was counting. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. What was she counting? With each number he heard something small and solid like a stone being dropped into a metal dish. Twenty-one! The final number was spoken with a particular flourish. Again, there was a clinking sound of something hitting metal. Twenty-one what? thought Alfie. He could feel that there was something different about himself, but he couldn't quite work out what it was. He started with his toes. He wiggled them. From there, he moved up his body. Ankles, tick. Knees, tick. Hands, tick. Elbows, tick. Shoulders, tick. Neck, tick. Then he moved his tongue around his mouth. Somehow, his mouth felt much larger now. Smooth too. Alfie traced his tongue to the furthest corners of his mouth. He could swear he could feel holes, great big holes that seemed the size of caves. It was then that Alfie realised he had no 
teeth. The metal cuffs that had been holding his ankles and wrists had retracted back into the seat. The boy leapt up and banged his head on the huge hot lamp that had been hovering above his mouth earlier. Swinging his legs round, he jumped onto the floor. On the trolley sat a dirty old cracked mirror. He grabbed it and held it up to his face. Alfie was sure the dentist was behind him, but she was nowhere to be seen in the mirror's reflection. Opening his mouth slowly, he could only see darkness inside. His gums were bare and swollen. The only future for him now, he found himself thinking, was that of a gurning champion. Gurning is the ancient art of pulling stupid faces. Champion gurners often have no teeth, even have them removed to make their features easier to manoeuvre. Alfie moved his face in front of the mirror. In horror, he discovered that now he could easily look like a fish. A man sucking his own nose, an old lady who'd swallowed a fly, a walnut, a puppet, a frog puckering up for a snog. Woken up now, have we? said Miss Root brightly from a corner of the room she turned to face him, her huge teeth glinting. What have you done with my teeth? shouted Alfie. Well, that's what he tried to say. It actually came out with, what you? I'm sorry, Alfie tried again. I'm terribly sorry, child. I didn't understand a word of what you just said. Is something the matter? Of course, yelled the boy. I still can't understand a single word you are saying. Would you mind writing it down for mummy? Write it down here. The dentist passed him a pile of appointment cards and a pen. He wrote furiously on one of them. What you done with my teeth, it read. The letters were large and pointed and angry. Miss Root studied it for a while. Hmm. I think what you are trying to ask, Mummy, is what have you done with my teeth? Alfie was fuming now. He was sure Miss Root knew full well what he meant. This was just another of her ways to slowly torture him. What are you Please don't use that tone with Mummy. Alfie was staring the lady right in the eyes now. She held his gaze and glared back. The pupils in her eyes shone black. On second look, they were blacker than coal, blacker than oil, blacker than night, blacker than the blackest black. In short, they were black. So, what have I done with your teeth? She said. Alfie nodded his head up and down, each nod more enraged than the last. Fang was sat on top of Miss Root's trolley, and now she started hissing in short, sharp bursts as if she was laughing at him. Not to worry, child. Mummy's kept your teeth safe for you. All the little beauties are in here. With that, she carefully lit lifted a little metal dish up to Alfie's ear and rattled it gently. The noise made her face light up with joy. Alfie looked inside. There were his teeth, every last one, all sadly piled on top of each other. Admittedly, they didn't look at all all healthy. The years of missing dental appointments had taken their toll. They were all stained brown from far too many sweets and fizzy drinks. However, did the dentist really need to remove every single one of them? Alfie realised that what she had been doing was counting his teeth. A 12-year-old boy is meant to have around 24 teeth, but Alfie had less than that. Mr. Erstwell, that old dentist who died mysteriously, took out all of those three years ago, and after that one or two had probably fallen out. So, here's a 12-year-old boy's teeth. Let's just hold it so you can see all of those bits. Wow, what a good diagram. Labelled and everything. What are you going to do? Would you mind awfully writing it down again for Mummy? Miss Root gestured once again towards the pad of appointment slips. Once more, Alfie scribbled furiously. What what are you going to do? He wrote. The dentist studied the piece of paper for a moment. Is that a G or a Y? Alfie growled at her. Miss Root read the sentence out loud. What are you going to do? Mummy's got it right, hasn't she? Alfie nodded and Miss Root furrowed her brow in thought. Well... Normally, at the end of any appointment, I would come out with the normal dentist's spiel. Come and see me in another six months. Don't forget to floss. Think about investing in an electric toothbrush. Blah, blah, blah. But there's no need for you to do any of that, Alfie. You see, you don't have any teeth anymore, and they are never going to grow back. With that, the dentist guided the poor toothless boy out of the room before she added cheerily, Good day! See you soon! 
And that was the end of that chapter. Gosh, what's she going to do? She can't just send him out with no teeth for the rest of his life, can she? I don't know. We'll have to find out tomorrow what happens, all right? Okay, so uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.